Unlike E3, I never really cared about the game awards, to be frank with you. They were never good. Honestly, even in the beginning, they were just an embarrassment. Though I kind of admire Jeff Keighley, he seems like he actually does care about the game industry to some degree. And his bromance with Kojima is kind of charming, actually, even if it is very cringy. But this is gaming we're talking about here. Every time there's some kind of professional presentation, there's cringe moments, as we've already talked about earlier this year with E3, so that's to be expected. That being said, there's a reason why Crobcat used to make fun of these every year. Because yeah, the Game Awards were the lowest of the low, much like the Oscars or the Grammys. It's all just a popularity contest. And unfortunately, as the woke virus that's infesting all of entertainment continues to grow and fester, every award show has also become more insufferable. I thought the PlayStation Showcase earlier this year would be the worst we'd seen of wokeness. Sadly, I was mistaken. Somehow, the VGA's 2021 managed to be even worse than E3 and that PlayStation Showcase. What was supposed to be just giving a bunch of awards to a bunch of games that don't really deserve it because they're just the most popular thing that came out that year has now turned into a full three and a half hour slog where between every award is 30 minutes of annoying music, game reveals for games nobody cares about, and of course diversity and inclusion sections. I'm sure that's what every gamer wants to see. So before we get into this, Honestly, I'm tired of saying do the things the algorithm likes, so do the laundry list of things that literally every YouTuber has told you to do. Thanks. Appreciate it. And before you ask, yes, my voice is screwed up because of the coof. And I'm completely fine. I have nothing else to say on that because I don't want to invoke High Empress Susan's righteous fury. So unfortunately, it's impossible to talk about the problems with this year's Game Awards without getting political. And unfortunately, that means we will also have to talk about race and gender. I don't want to talk about these things. I really don't. Because I don't care how you were born. I feel like I don't have to keep saying this, but of course I do because of some fucking lunatics that we all know. But I'm not going to explain again what forced diversity is. I'm just going to put a counter every time a female protagonist shows up and a second counter for every time that diversity, inclusion, accessibility, or the topic of race comes up during the presentation. If these two counters don't clue you in that you're watching political propaganda, well, I don't know what would. You're probably a lost cause. But in any case, I sure as fuck don't want it in my video games. So, let's just get this over with. The presentation begins with some music, which of course I had to mute during my stream, which there was probably at least 20 copyrighted songs over the course of the show, so obviously they didn't really want any YouTubers or Twitch streamers streaming this. Despite my best efforts, I still got copyright claimed by four or five sources. And then we're given a highlight reel of basically all the nominees for the various categories. And of course, the highlight reel has no gameplay in it. It's all cutscenes, of course. Because video games want to be respected. And so to be respected by the boomers, we have to become more like movies. Except that boomers will never respect video games. It's an absolute waste of time. And the people who actually play and care about video games do not play games solely for the story. Sure, if a game has a really good story, it can add to the experience, but gameplay is king, always has been, always will be, that's why they're games. You play them. So after this, Jeff Keighley finally shows up, really hams up the fact that this year it's live and in person, versus last year where it was basically a ghost town because, well, you know, the boomer killer virus was at its peak. And you'll probably notice many times during the show that basically everybody is still wearing masks. The good little virtue signalers that they are. Except, of course, when someone comes up to give their little speech with their award, and even then, they're usually flanked by another guy with a mask on, as if that somehow makes up for it? Someone explain that to me? And then, Jeff Keighley simultaneously throws shade at Blizzard for their recent problems with their employees. 
And also shills an online harassment hotline. Are you fucking kidding me? Then finally, Giancarlo Esposito comes on stage to read out the nominees for the first category, Indie Games. And I'm slightly embarrassed to say the only game on this list I played was Keena Bridge of Spirits, and funny enough, it also won. And I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say it did not deserve it. If you watch that stream, it is a very mediocre game. People compare it to, oh man, it's just like PS2 action-adventure games. It's like Ratchet and Clank or Jack and Daxter. No, it's nothing like those. It's a very mediocre action platformer that is sold entirely on its graphical style. The combat was awful, the world looks very generic and flat, and the level design is too linear, and honestly there's so many other things I could have complained about, and I only played it for two hours. So already off to a bad start on this one. Next up, we're finally given our first major gameplay reveal for Senua's Saga, aka Hellblade 2. And then immediately we are told a lie that this is all gameplay, when it's very obviously just a cutscene with vertical slice gameplay that absolutely will not reflect the final release. I am so fucking tired of these lies. Does this look like gameplay to you? No, it's a cutscene where maybe occasionally it'll give you a sort of quick time event reaction. But of course they took away the UI, so we have no idea when you're actually in control. Almost all of it looks like a fucking cutscene, and it goes on for five goddamn minutes. I sure hope you like fake gameplay, because there's a lot more where that came from. Oh, well, that's not a cinematic, that's gameplay, and that's why we Shut the fuck up, Jeff, really. Next up was probably the strangest reveal of the show, but I'll admit at least it was the most interesting, and that's Star Wars Eclipse. It's a Star Wars game being made by Quantic Dream. So a fucking walking simulator, but Star Wars? I mean, I couldn't care less about it, to be frank with you, but I don't know, I guess Detroit Become Human was kind of entertaining in an ironic way. David Cage is kind of a pseudo-intellectual, to be honest. And then we have quite possibly the worst part of the show, the Global Gaming Citizen section. And who could possibly be featured here that is representative of the best of the gaming community? Why, it's the drag queen streamers. <laughs> that, that looks like a gamer to me. <laughs> Maybe gamers really are the most oppressed group, but we, we have every walk of life plays video games, so gamers are the most oppressed group. It makes sense. Truly, we live in the best timeline. Then we get an ad break. I'm not going to glorify it as anything other than that. Then we get a teaser for a Wonder Woman game. No comment, because of course no gameplay is shown. Another one for the counter, I guess. Then we finally get to the next category, which is Best Performance, which is read out by Ashley Johnson and Laura Bailey, and we are reminded that they voiced two of the worst characters in video game history. And surprisingly, the award goes to the voice actress for Lady Dummy Trask from Resident Evil Village. I was actually pretty surprised by this. The Coomers win this round. Then we're given an actually interesting teaser for Alan Wake 2. Consider me interested, I guess. And Sam Lake, aka the face of Max Payne, even comes out to talk about the game for a little bit. That was pretty cool. Then we get some cringe, because it wouldn't be the Game Awards without cringe, and the voice of Sonic from the Sonic movie comes out to talk about the second movie, of course, is in development, we've known this for a bit. And Jim Carrey also shows up on the big screen and tells probably one of the worst jokes he's ever told. My Scottish grandfather gave to me when I was just a boy. He said, son, don't grate it in the grinder. Don't do it, son. Don't grate it in the grinder, boy. Grade it? By all means, grade it till the cows come home. But don't grade it in the grinder. And we are shown the trailer for Sonic 2. And I'll be honest, I'll probably watch it. I do think it's pretty stupid that Sonic doesn't know Tails in this universe. And I think Idris Elba voicing Knuckles is unintentionally hilarious. But whatever, you know, I mean, it's a Sonic movie. What do you expect? Next up, we're showing some vertical slice gameplay for the next Horizon game. And it's sad that this is probably the closest thing to uncut gameplay shown in the entire presentation. And even then, it's not real gameplay. It cuts to a new scene like every five seconds. And in case you're curious, no, I'm not excited for this game. The first game wasn't that good. 
Yet another overrated Sony exclusive. Then we're given another long ad break, and afterward, the actor who played Shang-Chi shows up, and this was actually one of the worst parts of the presentation. He's looking at his phone and then pretending he's watching, like, Halo gameplay, except he references Master Chief directly. So what, is he watching a Let's Play? Is it implied he's playing it on his phone? The joke doesn't make any fucking sense. It is super cringe, dude. But at least this guy is kind of saying what everyone else is thinking. Why are we watching this when we could be fucking playing Halo Infinite? Shit, I even said this during the stream. I'm tempted to play Halo while this is going on. <laughs> Get his fuck the game awards, dude. He then reads out the nominees for best action game, which is kind of a weak selection. I talked serious shit about two of the games on here, you know which two. And fortunately, I guess, the winner is Returnal, which I don't have a PS5, so I didn't play it, sadly, but I heard it was good, whatever. But it does have a female protagonist, so... Then we get a super long Destiny 2 ad with, uh, of course, another whammon. And what looks like off-brand Halo weapons that they just ported into Destiny? I guess there's no reason they can't do that, but kind of funny. Then we're shown a weird Japanese horror game. Unfortunately, no gameplay, but at least it looks interesting. And then we're probably shown the most visually interesting game of the show, which unfortunately is yet another open world survival crafting game. So that completely ruined any interest I had in it. What a shame. And then, of course, we're given some more diverse content creators to check out. At least the first guy is a veteran, so I can cut him some slack. But then we have this trans beat saber person. Yeah, that's great. Then we're shown a teaser for the Gollum game, and Gollum looks fucking awful. He looks like he has incest genes and fetal alcohol syndrome. Why? Just why? Then we get even more ads. A meaningless teaser and another musical performance to pad out the show. I mean, really, man? There is no reason this had to be three and a half hours. Can you believe at this point that we're only a little over an hour in? I'm gonna have to start speeding this shit up because honestly, already at this point, I was starting to fucking lose it and not care anymore. So let's just go through the highlights. The Sonic open world game is announced, which I think I put it best during the stream. Dude, no, Sonic Team cannot handle an open world game. Why do they keep doing this themselves? Kojima shows up on screen for a few seconds, because I guess he couldn't make it to the show for whatever reason, and he advertises one of Guillermo del Toro's movies. Yeah, we're advertising movies during a fucking Game Awards show now. And then, appropriately, Guillermo del Toro reads out the nominees for Best Art Direction, and the winner is Deathloop, which is fucking stupid and wrong. I mean, really? Oh, because it has like a 60s, 70s kind of colorful art style to it. It still just looks like Dishonored, but with guns. I might not like Tim Schafer, but Psychonauts 2 got robbed, period, for this entire fucking show. It did not win a single category, despite being the game of the year, in my opinion. Then the player's voice category gets announced, which is the fan vote for game of the year. And it's Halo Infinite? But it came out the day before the Game Awards. People were voting for it just based on the multiplayer, which only has 10 maps and like three fucking game modes. If you're an Xbox fanboy, you're a moron. End of story. Sorry. You didn't even play the real game yet. You played a cheap-ass games-as-a-service multiplayer with Halo gameplay and then decided that was Game of the Year. Fuck you and your shit taste. Then we get Content Creator of the Year, which is Dream. Why? I don't know. I barely even know who this guy is. Best multiplayer game is It Takes Two. Don't expect that to be the last time it's mentioned here. Which I find kind of hilarious that Best Multiplayer Game doesn't get its own special announcement, despite being probably the most profitable part of the gaming industry. Best Mobile Game is Genshin Impact. I don't think anybody's surprised by that. Then we get yet another diversity inclusion section with Global Gaming Citizen. And they literally have a fucking lecture called A Lesson in Blackness. You can't make this up, dude. If that came out 20 years ago, I don't care who you are, that would be considered racist, even for a black person. 
And of course, it's a bunch of complaining about oppression. Are you surprised? Then we have the nominees for Best Narrative, given by Ming Na Wen. And also, just speaking as the mother of a son who loves gaming, it's nice when there's more to the story than just blowing up grenade factories and shouting obscenities at your alligator brides. Here are the what? nominees. What? And yeah, this was probably the category with the worst nominees. I'll admit, I don't give a shit about narratives in video games much anymore, because they become so prominent that they now take away from the gameplay in basically every AAA release, so yeah, I can't bring myself to care about the stories. And this selection was pretty poor. And the winner was Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, which I actually played, believe it or not, and I'm okay with this. The writing was the best part of that game. I wouldn't say the story, ironically, I would say more the character interactions are pretty much perfect to the movie, but whatever, I'll take it. Then we get another game that adds to the counter, and then we get a very awkward gameplay reveal for the Suicide Squad game. God damn, Deborah Wilson is looking bad these days. She's been in so many games now, and she's looked awful in every single one. I think since her Wolfenstein 2 appearance, I just severely cringe every time I see her. And yeah, she's looking worse than ever. And the gameplay looks alright, but it was heavily scripted, so who knows even what the game really plays like. Kind of reminds me of Agents of Mayhem, and that's not a good thing. And if you know anything about my channel, you know I don't like the Suicide Squad. And, of course, there's even more cringe. He is a ruthless adversary for Frey, and I hope players get into it. Looking for a boss fight with this woman at some point. I definitely hope Please, God, stop. Fight. As Forspoken is talked about again, another game revealed during the PlayStation Showcase, the Isekai game with a teenage black girl as the protagonist. And then the last beacon of hope is shown during the show. The reveal of Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2. Guys, it's the Space Marines. I love the Space Marines. It's been a while since we've had a real God of War clone, so I'm hoping for the best. I'm not gonna pretend I'm a huge fan of Warhammer, but I've always thought some of the concepts were pretty cool, so I hope the game's good. And I'm gonna be honest with you, this is when I started to lose interest, and so did the chat. I literally just started muting whenever nothing interesting was happening and playing video game music. So I'm just gonna wrap this up because this video is probably too long already. Let's just talk about the rest of the category winners. The winner of the action adventure category was Metroid Dread, which thankfully it won something. Being one of the few games this year actually worth your time. Maybe I was a little bit harsh on it in the review, but it really is a great game. Definitely a solid game of the year contender. I do think the nominees for that category are comical because literally all of them were a different genre, showing you that action adventure means absolutely nothing. Literally, what have we had? We had cinematic action game, Metroidvania, 3D platformer, third person shooter, first person horror shooter. How do those five things the same genre? They're not. Showing you that the term action adventure doesn't mean anything. You could put almost any game in that category and it would fit. Then like 30 minutes later, Reggie fils read out Best Ongoing Game, which was Final Fantasy XIV, which is kind of surprising because it was surrounded by shooters, basically. But I guess good for you guys if you play that. Then the next category is Games for Accessibility. Fuck off, I'm not even going to tell you what won that one, who cares? Jacksepticeye shows up, says like one line, and he's already been at the Game Awards in a previous year. This doesn't even deserve mentioning. Let's move on. Then the next category is Best Game Direction, which is another awful name for a category. It doesn't really make sense, but as they explain it, it's supposed to be the most innovative game that is the result of a bunch of hardworking people who came together, yada yada yada. Fucking Deathloop won. If you've played that game, which nobody's played the game, that's how they keep getting away with giving it all these accolades, it is not that fucking good. Just like I said in that video and got a shit ton of dislikes for no reason, it's a fine game, but it is the second worst game Arcane Studios has ever made, with the worst being Dishonored Death of the Outsider, so if you don't even count that, it's the worst game they've made. It's like a half-assed roguelike, 
except they didn't even think out any of those roguelite mechanics, so it's more like an FPS where you just play the same few levels over and over again with slight variation depending on the day, and there's only one solution to kill all the dudes to beat the game. So there's no randomness really, so it's just repetitive. How is that best game direction? I would unironically put it in one of the worst game directions this year, with the worst probably being Biomutant by a considerable margin. But yeah, it's safe to say this is a diversity pick 100 fucking percent. This game does not deserve any awards. Well, at least shortly after this, we get a cinematic Elden Ring trailer, but honestly, I think we've all seen enough. If you're interested in the game, you're definitely going to buy it. I know I am. And then, for Game of the Year, of course, Neil Druckmann comes on stage to read. Just to add that final cherry on top to how much of a fucking disaster the Game Awards is. And against all odds, the winner is It Takes Two. I was actually really surprised by this, even though this crazy lunatic guy has been on the Game Awards probably like three times now. I honestly didn't think they'd give him the win. If you don't recognize him, you'll probably remember him from this. Fuck the Oscars, you know? <laughs> Fuck the Oscars! Fuck you! And yeah, I heard It Takes Two was good. I wanted to play it, but I couldn't get a second person to play it with, unfortunately. So I'll take that over Deathloop winning Game of the Year because it sure as fuck doesn't deserve it, doesn't even deserve to be nominated, to be frank with you. But I definitely would have chosen Psychonauts 2 or Metroid Dread over It Takes Two, even though I haven't played it. But look, I value gameplay, and that's a co-op puzzle game. It's just really not that interesting. I don't care how good the story is. Hate to say it. And yeah, that pretty much wraps up the Game Awards. What a fucking disaster. Three and a half hours. For what? Like six or seven big categories? And constant ad breaks, dude. And out of like over 20 world premieres. Only like three or four of them were good. What an absolute waste of time. Just like E3. Except this was actually worse than E3 overall. Sure, maybe it was better than the worst showcase, but at least Microsoft and Nintendo's conferences were kind of watchable this year. Whereas with the Game Awards, there's no point to watching this whatsoever. It's not entertaining. The opinions here don't reflect the gaming community on any level. It's just a bunch of rich people jerking each other off, except it's even more pathetic than the Oscars because they're so desperate to be accepted by Hollywood. Shoving all of this constant diversity and politics shit in our faces is getting so tiring, man. I skimmed over a lot of parts where they had female protagonists and diversity inclusion shit. So I'm gonna add a bunch of numbers to the counter, and I don't care if you believe it or not. I went through the footage. This is the final count. This is just a perfect representation for the death of the industry. And I think it's pretty telling when my audience was constantly requesting sad game songs to play over this. Because truly, the Game Awards is representing the death of the industry. For as bad as it was in the beginning, now it is unwatchable. Much like how AAA games are slowly becoming unplayable. Except to the most casual masses who don't give a shit about video games anyway. Really, the big takeaway from the Game Awards this year is that gaming is not for gamers anymore. And people wonder why I always talk about old games. If it wasn't for the channel, I probably would only be playing like one or two new AAA games a year. Gaming is dying and politics are killing it. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Like, comment, sub, blah, 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 whatever, you know. All that stuff helps out the channel. Check out my Patreon if you want to support me directly. And I should be working on the Halo Infinite review right now. It's probably going to come out a little bit too late, but I do want to talk about it because I'm having a lot of fun so far, despite some complaints. Not much else to say other than that, I'll keep you posted. I haven't done community posts in a while, but I'll get back into doing that. And yeah, I'll see you next time, guys.